This is so we can share the update with the community for people who are interested in the Trolley Path. Perfect. Um, so I think everyone's aware that we've been working on extending the Trolley Path Major Skate Path to the Zenith to Abbott block. Uh, so we really got going with broader community outreach over the past month. What we've done to source feedback from the community is uh, put out a survey and uh, post flyers to all the adjacent blocks. It was about 100 flyers to any residents uh, on Zenith or Abbott, a block north, south, or on 44th Street. So all the businesses as well there. Uh, we put out the survey in the uh, special edition of the E line. So to our whole distribution list, we had about 130 responses. Uh, the survey sounds pretty good. Uh, feedback for us. Uh, we then had a walk of the trolley path uh, for that walk. So about an hour long with 12 folks uh, to kind of introduce the site to them, make sure they understood what we were talking about, what the constraints are, uh, what kind of vision is for that space, gathered feedback at that session, and took it back to the zoning and housing meeting uh, last month and discussed it for uh, about another 30 minutes, kind of brainstorming ideally what would folks like to see in this space. Uh, we then formed the Polytown Advisory Committee in the past month. So we had our first official meeting. I was open to anyone who wanted to be a part of the process. We had somewhere between 20 and 30 people indicate they want to be in the loop on that. Uh, we had 11 people join the first meeting. Uh, so that was still a pretty good number. Um, and a couple new faces who hadn't been involved with the process before, so it was nice to get them. Uh, during that meeting, then, we went through all of the feedback, so the survey responses and the uh, input gathered at the block and at the community meeting, and tried to distill down what sort of features and what sort of use the community wants for that space. Uh, we got to a pretty primitive nature scape, simple path through some ideas on the types of plantings, types of features like uh, you don't know more, but you know, uh, seating, lighting, accessibility, those sorts of themes came out. Uh, so now Bjorn has gone through and created an initial design for the space, taking all that feedback and uh, just trying to show what it may look like. Our next steps then are going to be uh, sharing this out with, with everyone tonight. Uh, we'll be at the farmer's market the next two Sundays with the print out version of this, trying to uh, solicit more feedback. Uh, from the community and then hopefully iterate on this uh, and then we're bringing it to uh, the city. We have a couple outstanding items that we still need clarification on, on I think particularly the, the south side of the block on the west side and the east side uh, that businesses currently use. Uh, so still some things to work out there, but uh, we want to kind of envision what the space could look like and then go forward with uh, seeing how much access to it. So I'll give it to you now, Norn, if you are ready to talk through the action diagram. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. That was great. Um, yeah, it was a really productive meeting. Um, what I have here is kind of a exhibit, a diagram a little bit that summarizes the conversations that we had. Um, I, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, there's um, there's two two important parts I think overall to the ideas here. One is that it, essentially, you know, there's been history to the site, and so there's. Uh, some existing easements, revocable leases, kind of the relationship of the businesses to the back alley. Um, and so our original vision and plan is really to take and and do what we can with the maximum area. Uh, but one thing that we are trying to do is create a couple of modules uh, that can either be subtracted or added uh, as we kind of resolve some of those outlying issues um, over time. Um, and I think the other really important part about this process is right now we're in what I would call a visioning phase where we're trying to really think about what's uh, some of the best potential and try to keep it very open and uh, involve partners and, and people that want to volunteer and put in some sweat equity. So, you know, anybody uh, get them involved. Um, but uh, so this this here is not something that's going to go out to get priced. Uh, and bid, and this is not a final plan. This is really a template for us to help build out as we move forward and give us a guiding kind of rule set in order to achieve uh, some of the vision. So more to come on how we execute it, but again, this is a, a vision. Um, and what you see here, um, some primary features that were identified uh, from the community input is the presence of all the banking path. Uh, you see that in the dark uh, wavy uh, across the top. 
uh, and part of that was snow plow, so maintaining some soft ground cover next to it so the, the snow plow are plants. Um, and then after that, um, thinking about lighting, about a couple seating opportunities, um, about the plaques and the history that are in the space, about opportunities for native flower gardens and pollinators, um, and about kind of screening to neighbors um, and maybe even providing some of that sense of security back there. Uh, but generally kind of a, a, a full nature scape uh, overall. Um, the other important feature is, you know, actually there's a lot of community support for helping and, and making sure that the businesses can continue to thrive. Um, and so we're maintaining kind of a back pathway along the back of that building in order to get to wooden ship Tommy T. Cyclery, which I believe changed names recently. I'm not sure about that. Um, but to also then locating a trash and closure towards the end of that and kind of reclaiming the parking lot for green. Um, so these, this is a part of the vision and the planning, um, and we'll see where that uh, leads us ultimately. Um, so more, more development on this. I think our plan is to attend uh, the farmer's market a couple times and just try to get as many voices as we can to provide some uh, community input for the process. Any questions or comments that I can answer? Thanks for sharing this guy. So can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Did you hear? Bjorn? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear very well. Right. Maybe you can't hear me, but I can hear you. So we're taking, you're, this is proposing taking out the concrete uh, parking lot of uh, Dunright, right? Yeah. yeah. One this second. is indeed, yep. Right. Can I go out and point? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, right here. So we've taken out that concrete parking lot. And then this is, yep. is, is this the trash enclosure? Is that what that yeah. is? Is there that? Can you see where he's pointing? You probably can't yeah, see where I he's pointing. Well, I can see with my bird review, and it's right here where he's pointing. That, that must be the right. trash yep. enclosure. Okay. Yep. It's a separate enclosure for trash. Yeah. Correct. And it would use the existing curb cut, right, Bjorn? Absolutely. That is the plan. Is that you, Lene? Yeah. All right. Excellent. I think for everyone there, the folks who were at the Family Advisory Committee were particularly interested in reclaiming the maximum amount of land, and that really came out of the plan. Still aware that, you know, Public Works needs access to the site. There are details to figure out, but uh, <laughs> We wanted to show the maximum extent uh, kind of vision that the committee members were hoping to bring through in the initial plans, uh, and then if that can have to be changed, obviously it's early, but that's that was kind of motivation for this. Mike, uh, we'll just oh, go ahead, Bjorn. Well, I would I would add, uh, particularly since Lenny is there, that um, we've identified you know the areas that are contentious in terms of operations. And so that's why you see that pathway extending along the north edge of that in order to leave uh, if the other components are not included, a 30 foot area of potential for the businesses as that gets resolved. So again, trying to keep modular so that we can respect or work through uh, peacefully um, uh, those, um, yeah, that conflict, let's say. I like it. That's a Sweet. <laughs> you know, uh, Wait, did you see Mike? Uh, no, thing? You got your hand raised. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, and I've got an enthusiastic little guy here with me, too, that might ask some questions. I don't know. Um, but when we had the city planner come speak with us a few months ago, one of the main sticking points that seemed like he had, or two of the main sticking points, was number one, he needed a business or some sort of an organization to like underwrite the area so that they could um, ensure that it was going to be cared for long term and not just like handshake and promises like it. I, I think he had specifically said that when the when the current trolley path, path was redone, that it was just kind of a handshake promise that the neighborhood would keep it up to date and that that's not what the city likes to do and prefers to do, that they need like an actual organization to underwrite it. Is that ringing any bells for anybody else? Am I saying something that's, that's ringing true? Um, no, that, that sounds right to me, Mike. Um, we, have we made we, any progress on that front? That's my first question. Uh, not, not specific 
progress on that. I think there are actually a number of partners that uh, would be interested. I think some of this in terms of vision is like establish what that is to make sure that the partner knows what they're getting into. So we're just, you know, kind of working uh, incremental steps in order to get there. But um, we have we have great partners in Linden Hills to do such things like this. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Great. And then the other one that I remember was a big sticking point is a, a single cohesive vision that could be presented and agreed upon and, and moved forward with. And so is that the main goal of this effort here is let's get a group together, let's create that cohesive vision that there aren't a lot of alternatives that we're still kind of squabbling about and we've got one direction yeah. that we're all headed towards together. Yeah, I think that that's true. Um, um, I think that, you know, we actually done right was a part of one of our conversations or representative of done right um, owner, I think. Uh, um, and uh, also um, we'll be looking to continue to get more support from the business, but certainly supporting those businesses has been identified as a concern for everyone. Um, I also would say that the only caveat I would make is that actually, in my opinion, the input that we've gathered so far has been from a specific group of individuals within the community and, you know, specifically neighbors, those most potentially impacted by it. But as I, I would hope that we're able to broaden uh, the input as a part of that. Um, but in terms of this idea of cohesive vision, I think that's exactly what, what um, we're, I think we're striking and balancing here. Um, those voices that had a lot of the greatest concern other than the businesses, uh, we've all sat down together, looked each other in the eye, come to a place where uh, this is this is a approximation, a close. It's a first draft of what we think uh, works for everyone. So that that the spirit and representing the vision of the Linden Hills neighborhood as a whole uh, has absolutely been a part of our goal and our process, uh, which is why we've done the outreach that we have as well. Great. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. That was just, I remember those being the two biggest points that that designer had a while ago. So yeah. thanks making sure those are kept at the top of mind. Those are great questions. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Are there any other questions or do we want to just talk through, I think you kind of shared that stuff, but do you want to just um, kind of reiterate those briefly now that well, yeah. Um, so next two weekends will be at the farmer's market the entire time. So ENS will be there this weekend. Zoni has the next weekend. We're going to print off a nice big poster of this and then just hopefully this will be something. So it's comments. Um, after that, then we'll get the advisory committee together again. We don't have a date for that. Uh, so there'll just be a doodle poll going out. If anyone who's not been involved so far wants to be involved, everyone is still welcome. Just let me know or Bjorn. Um, We'll schedule meeting probably I would, I would just assume early September at this point uh, to see what sort of initial adjustments we have to make. And then it's really, I think, um, once we have a firmer idea of what we can say the community would support for the space, going back to what constraints we have and seeing what we can actually get done. So that's working with the city, the public works, it's trying to think about financing and have an idea for some of the funding from entry funds, um, you know, to support some of the you know, primitive plans that we're thinking of. But, a lot of these guys think about what can we fund, what's sort of volunteer force do we need to make these changes that we're doing ourselves as we have as much participation as we can. Hey, I've been blown away. Yeah, yeah we've had a lot. It's been great. I, I feel pretty good about yeah. the engagement we've been able to get. Yeah, even when we posted on Instagram, people were popping off. Yeah. <laughs> I was so surprised. Yeah, I mean, in a good way, but it was. Like very very well received. Just I think people like being asked and they enjoy being kind of in that. What what feels to them in the very beginning? We know that it's been like fifteen years. <laughs> another start, right? But it's been exciting to see that. Um, Mike, do you have I, another question or is that? Yeah, sorry, just to follow up on a on yeah. a comment you made about the funding yeah. piece of it. Um, oh. I had found and was reading through like the Minis <laughs> Minneapolis Parks Board like 20 year investment recommendations. And I thought a couple of years ago when they finalized that for our area, that they did earmark some plans and funds for the trolley path. Is that, that would have been like a year, two years ago, probably. Have they already, like, have you been in conversation with them? Yeah, so if you're thinking of maybe the proposed part in the Southwest master plan, is my guess. And what I know about that is it's- um, Potential part. 
Central Park? Yeah. Central Park, sorry. Um, yeah, so it, it's from what I've heard from them, uh, we did have uh, Kathy, our, our parks commissioner, at one of our meetings. Uh, they have a long term proposed park, as a park for that, um, for, for an even greater section than probably that. Basically, they want a thoroughfare from France to the lakes. Um, but they don't have a timeline, and I don't think they have funding uh, for it lined up. So it's, it's really just a long term future plan. So, what we're doing is the land is still uh, owned by the city at this point. Um, and the idea is that eventually it will be transferred to the parks department when they can build out that uh, proposed park. Um, so, at this point, we are trying to make short term improvements that can kind of pluck that gap because we seem to have uh, you know, some momentum from the community and some of the businesses were involved um, in these talks. Uh, early on last fall. So we felt like there was an opportunity for us to do something with this plot of land and not just wait for the parks department to be able to do the entire stretch. Um, and that's another factor going into kind of the more primitive design. Uh, we're aware that their proposed plan looks a lot different than what we have right now. It, it, it like really prioritizes pedestrian and bicyclist uh, mobility through the stretch. So much wider walkways, uh, more accessible, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and we just don't have the funding for that. And um, it's kind of not in our lane to uh, like try and create the eventual park. So we're just trying to make an improvement short term that goes with the nature scape. Um, and then, kind of, you know, not invest too much knowing that eventually they're probably going to change this model. Yeah, and to, to add on in terms of like tapping into finances, I have a suspicion, although it's worth confirmation, that those funds would need to be spent on things that were approved by the park board through their process of public engagement. So I, I would sort of venture to guess that those funds would be sort of off limits for tapping into. But worth question. Uh, in the interest of time, we're going to move on to thank you so much for that update. That was wonderful. So thank you. Uh, and thanks for the effort you've done between convening everybody and drawing your design. It's really nice to be forward to making progress on this. So we really look forward to hearing kind of what feedback you get over the next two weeks. Uh, that's our first part. We're going to move on now to a uh, quick update from uh, Council Member Linnae. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, we have about 15 minutes on our agenda. We invite Linnae um, quarterly to come to our meetings and give a neighborhood wide update or word wide update. And so that's she's been invited here tonight to be asked. Thank you. Number Hi. Two. Hi, everybody. I'm Council Vice President Linnae Palmasano. Um, Actually, if you don't mind, if we could continue the trolley path from the city side perspective, I'd like to start with that. Other things I brought is updates um, for tonight is a quick update on what I know about neighborhood funding, um, a little bit about the climate equity plan, and then maybe if anybody wants to hear a little bit about some of the recent third precinct, um, that's a police precinct, it doesn't serve this neighborhood, but it's been in the news a lot, so happy to talk about that or just take other questions or anything you might have. But so um, on this trolley path, I mean, I'm really excited about this. Back when I was a link board member and then way before I was a link board member is when the development of this path, you know, really started. And it started with NRP money. Um, and I wasn't part of laying the groundwork and the sidewalk and the lights in that first part, but NRP money was and we even found old photos of you know link volunteers and board members over time like literally doing the work to put that in also a part of this path is motor place right and the sidewalk that is on the south side of motor place so along 44th street wasn't a sidewalk until it became part of this vision this continuous park that would go all the way from france to the lake um, Ken uses it, I use it pretty regularly. We don't live in, in the immediate adjacent surrounding. It is a thoroughfare and it is a, a path. Um, this next chunk of it is really exciting to see it take shape and to see you be so thoughtful about how to engage different voices in the conversation. Um, I have worked to be in really consistent communication with public works on this piece of it, there's also a whole other piece of it going on with the renewal of the trolley train, because that's part city land, part park board land, and it all needs to be like leased to the trolley organization so that they can do grant writing and work for that. And that got 
a bit bungled during COVID times. Um, but it's really helpful. And if you're at a point of even just sharing a draft with draft all over it, I would love to share it with Public Works because I have found in some of my conversations with them about this block um, that they end up with really weird ideas about what I've just said, right? Like they literally thought last time we were just talking about the area behind Williamship and not like the whole rest of the block. Like I'm not sure how they could have gotten that from this lost in translation bit, but I'm glad we cleared that up. Um, the This first draft, just to clarify, is programming or drafting out approximately 30 feet of right away. Did I understand that correctly with the rest of it left for businesses with that? No, I think it's more than that. Um, because I think the whole thoroughfare is 50 feet on the east side of the block. I think Bjorn left a walkway on the back side. Uh, it's a walkway, not a park, not not exactly. a place you can park cars parallel to the building. Right. I think there'd be no car entrance past where he so that, that uh, and that that makes sense because that is why the garbage cans are by that ingress egress or what today is the ingress egress on Venus. Right. So I guess that's 40 feet based on the um bump out that they had in the west side of line, but... Yes. Okay. Um so like that's super helpful to know. Uh you know public works is aware that you're coming forward with a plan and I'm here to talk about how thoughtful you've been in getting community input on it, but they are the ultimate decision maker on what can and can't be allowed on city owned property. Uh, it's really important that the path also serve businesses on that block, as you said, as you reflected in the feedback. Uh, in order for the city to enforce the encroachment right now by done right, and you've had recent conversations with at least a representative of done right more recent than I have. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what they are thinking about it, but I, I will say it has to be a higher public purpose than what exists today, which is just, we're not going to force them out of it to be kind of a nothing right. type thing, right? Like right now it has a functional use. It's not really a public use. It's still being used as like a parking pad, even though it's really rare. I personally see the vehicle on it, but it's, you know, it's intact concrete versus just what, like chunked up concrete, yeah. right? like, like a rubble pile or something. We don't want that. We There would be a cost for actual removal and probably we would want to do that with remediation of that area. I'm not sure how you've looked at the finances, but I will say when I started looking at kind of the dream here, I realized how it's not just gravel back there behind wooden ship and that, like it's pretty fortified. Like it will take a lot of expensive, big equipment to get that out of there to make it plantable and stuff again. Uh, so I'm sure that people more qualified than me are, are kind of looking at that and assuming that cost. That wouldn't be a cost assumed by the city. Something that one of our public works engineers thought of is that they wonder if there's actually trolley tracks underneath that somewhere. We, I think we're told the ties are still there, but the tracks are not. Is that right, Ken? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So the tracks are not very common. There was one guy who was in the committee that trolley from the museum. That area. I don't know. So another another kind of construct, like a city construct we investigated here was if we could if it could ride under kind of like the policies of our community garden program. Okay. And it turns out that's really not a good thing uh, because that is about um well for the city that it's easier to manage, right? There's no encroachment permits, et cetera, but it that doesn't really pertain to what it is you want to do. That's a lot different than, I don't know, Victory Memorial Garden. You know, like it's kind of like least garden plots. And, and while there is maybe some interest in that, I'm not sure that you've seen any of that from your surveying or feedback as people to like have their own garden plot to grow vegetables and stuff on a year by year lease basis. Yeah, see, I yeah, think it wasn't the main. We heard one or two people, but I would say. Yeah, so your idea of nature scape really doesn't fit the goals of that program. And so I kind of said no. Uh, so as 
I think Mike Williamson had chimed in. As we all know, like a very clear memorandum of understanding is going to need to uh, be outlined and a sponsor. I guess I've always assumed it would be the name of the organization, but whatever that, you know, sponsor organization is or like fiscal agent or whatever, um, that would have to have the maintenance plan in place. And before, yes, it's been a bit higgly piggly maybe, but it's not that it didn't work. Like it's always kind of worked in my experience as a neighbor that has been for decades here. So it's just, it's kind of, so thank you for spending time on that and kind of getting everybody gathered. Uh, I've had some conversations with people who are volu big volunteers there. I've had some conversations with people who have mediated old conversations like Dako BC, who co chaired Link with me way back in the day. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of exciting. Yeah. So thank you. Hopefully we can get it done. Yeah. Can I ask a question yeah. about that? Link can be the sponsor. We don't have to find like a different, like we wouldn't have to find another group that we would say we would pay them to keep the path up, we could be that person. I guess I've always thought it, that Link would be the most suitable mix. Because yeah, you have I just wanted to ensure that. Because you good. have, you know, liability insurance because yeah. of all the other things. Okay. Um, that's great. I just didn't know if that was okay or if we had to find, like, a gardening company or somebody that can think like, so. That's okay. okay. And you know that in the past, Harvey over there on 43rd has done some of the landscape. Oh, like a lot of times. Okay. He has a lot of the, I guess I call it oral history at this point in time, but yeah. Harvey over there in the yellow house that you can't quite see from here, he has a lot of the, uh, okay. or sorry, is it Bob? Yeah, Bob Harvey. Bob Harvey. Bob. Yes. Bob. Yes. Uh, uh, he's a he's a neighbor of mine, so we are close. Uh, super. Uh, so yeah. Any other thoughts on the trolley path pertinent for me to take back to the city or anything like that? Tell them that they're so in favor of it that they cannot confuse. Oh, they know that I could pretty much spend all my time managing the trolley right away during my week. And it comes up in the strangest ways. <laughs> we don't need to get into those here. But uh, but yeah, they know they know it's a passion project for sure. Uh, neighborhood funding. Uh, just quickly, you know that I've been advocating to the mayor's office about that legislative directive we got in last year to review neighborhood funding and take a look at it a different way. Uh, neighborhood Community Relations Department presented a part of their findings last week 